Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All oh, vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and literally three seconds ago, both my guest and my co-host bailed. I'm hoping they'll return in a second, but until then, you've got to put up with me. <laughs> uh, anyway, back on topic. Tonight, we have, joining me as my co-host once again, we have Hawk, or Scarecrow, or, well, I'll just go with Scarecrow. Even God. And we have a super special guest friend of Scarecrow, the creative artistic madman, Andy, somebody or other, I've forgotten his last name, Saha. <laughs> you could call me Newton if you really want to. Okay, Bob, we'll go with Bob. Um... Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> then we're off to a great start, we haven't... it's already derailed, we haven't even started. <laughs> oh man, You're I haven't, welcome. <laughs> I haven't even announced the segments, and we're gone. Anyway, I'm, we're all fired, and, and the show is over, we're all going home. No, no. <laughs> um, t- tonight on the show, we talk the newest episode of The Librarian. Um, we talk the... Oh, great, my mind just went again. We talk the newest episode of The Librarian. We've got a couple of pieces of Star Wars-related news. Uh, a, cup, a piece of um, Suicide Squad-related news. Something very interesting to do with Avengers, and last but not least, and something I want to have a bit of a chat about, so we'll leave it all the way for segment three, uh, more news on the Stargate movie. So, anyway. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, a bit of, bit of uh, creative juices flying back and forth here. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Is not what. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the fandom in the Stargate movie. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that last, because it's probably going to take a, a fair chunk of everything. Um, so anyway, first up is the newest episode of The Librarian. David, did you get around to watching that this week? I most certainly did see it. <laughs> You're very quiet, Thanks. sir. Hmm. Sorry, that's probably I'll my finish his mic. Ah, there we go. Overall volume system. That's that's a bit better. See, I don't want it because I've only got one channel for both of you, and I don't want to turn it up too much because Andy's very very loud sometimes, (laughs) which isn't his fault. It's just I'll go turn down my mic. All good, mate. Leave it as it is. Yeah, that that looks fine. Okay. Anyway, you did you end up watching Librarian and stuff and stuff? I did. It was very very different. I loved the way they brought the Minotaur into it this time. Yeah, that was that was really well done, and I like the. I mean, the... it wasn't the traditional sort of Minotaur. You, you think Minotaur? You picture big, brutish guy with lower goat body and huge horns. Instead, he just got the maze. Well, they got the maze part right. Yeah, the maze part was they done really, really got the well. The maze part right. The maze was really the, good. The uh, Minotaur part looked like a really pissed off bikey with demonic red gold eyes. Which was pretty cool. A pissed off what now? Um, okay, Minotaur basically... looks like a pissed off bikey from hell with glowing red, red tinted eyes that glowed almost like a gold. So what happened was, ah. for those who haven't actually seen this week's Ghost episode Brand. of The Librarian, all, our, all of our literally zero listeners. Hello, zero listeners. We miss you. Anyway, um, what happened was... The librarian guys um, went to investigate a company. I can't actually remember why. It's been a week since I watched this thing. I should really re-watch it before I do the show. Not the point. Um, <laughs> and 
they find themselves Same. stuck in... That's right, there's a heap of interns going missing. And they can't work out why. So they go and they find that they're inside some ancient sort of... A recreation of the Minotaur's Labyrinth. And in the Labyrinth is... The very beginning, when you first see it, is a, a proper standard Minotaur. Bull's head, pissed off, chasing them down. Later on, the labyrinth changes so that it represents the outside world instead of some sub-basement and tunnels and things. And when that happens, you see the Minotaur turn into stereotypical pissed-off bikey guy. And I actually think it looks far more menacing as stereotypical pissed-off bikey guy than it does as a Minotaur. Um, and the way the, the maze reconfigured was really cool, and the way it sort of jumped around in there, um, did you like the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it this, but I'm gonna instantly regret calling it this, did you like the hymen on the, um, the space-time bridge, the little filament they had to punch through, so that they could come in yeah. and out whenever the hell they wanted to, that was just bizarre. <laughs> I think that was like a one-time interesting gimmick type thing very weird um, someone who hasn't watched the show oh you're scared makes now i wonder what the hell it is oh, it's really no, good man serious um episode four just released today so yeah so we're a little bit behind i haven't actually seen that one yet i'll have to well we never really get the chance to actually watch the newest episode before the podcast yeah. You always got something happening on the Monday during the daytime. Yeah, pretty much. I, today is my last day of work, and tomorrow is my Saturday, right through till Friday, which is really my Monday, and Monday, which is my Friday, because I love living confusingly. So yeah, um, so yeah, I really enjoyed. It. I got, a, I got a feeling that the librarian is getting, it's definitely looking for its stride, and I'm not a hundred percent sure if they know where they're going with it. They seem to be sort I of. I don't think they do yet. Testing they're, the waters. And... It's. They're still very new. They're, remember the uh, way that some other series tested the water early on. Oh yeah, a lot. A lot of sci-fi series. Well, this one I'd have to rate closer to fantasy. Not the point. A lot of these sort of series take, sort of a season, season and a half to really get their groove. And once they've got their groove, they tend to be fine. It's just giving them that time first. And that's the sort of thing that a lot of um, TV networks don't want to do. They don't want to give them two seasons off the bat because it's yeah, it's it's very 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 big gamble, and they don't want to risk it. Yeah, well, they've like if I'm going to reference this as a more recent series than say Stargate, um, I'm going to use The Last Ship. Now they took that in directions that no one expected and the first two or three episodes were really really slow yeah like they were trying to find which way they were going to take it and then they found some sort of footing for it and it just went nuts yeah is there any more of that coming i can't remember i don't yeah, know the second season is confirmed and in production at the moment nice because i know um What's his face? It was from... just a short ten series, What's ten his... episode one to start with, and yeah. What's his face from Chuck and uh, Fireflies in it? I'm thinking Baldwin, Baldwin, somebody. Yeah, I've forgotten his name. He's talking the same guy who plays Wash. Yeah, what? No. Um, no, not Wash. Um, Jane, wasn't it? Jane. He played Jane, and he played. Oh, here we go. Yeah. He's the XO of the ship. Yeah. He's the XO of the ship. So, yeah. So, yeah, that so was... we have the obligatory badass in the yeah. command crew. Exactly. Um, now, to be honest, I didn't really like so, the last that ship one. that much. I watched it right up to the part... I don't know if... I'm not even sure if it was the last episode. But I watched it right up to where they had to escape from that harbour and they blew up the reef. And they used tin foil to sort of cloak where the ship was going to be. Um, I think that's the last episode I remember watching. No, that was episode eight. That was okay. Well, then I've missed two. But yeah, I just see, I'm, not a, it, I'm not a I'm not a big they fan make it of the back to the US, but they might be a little. They're a little late to make it back in time to save the captain's wife. 
Oh, okay. They do have the cure. Spoiler alert. You yeah, get that all the time through here. You're not, if you're listening and you haven't expected spoilers from us, then I'm sorry, but that show has kind of been yeah. aired so, for the last so eight months. We've got a, we've got a, um, like a one-week spoiler alert warning. If it's older than a week and you're listening to us, it's your own damn fault. It's pretty much how it works. Oh, on another slight topic, keep your ears peeled for next week because we do have the Doctor Who Christmas special to cover in the next week's podcast. Yes, we will definitely be covering the Doctor Who Christmas special. And on the note of um, the podcast, we might be having another one tomorrow. Um, I'm currently talking to one of the other admins, Michael, and we might be organising to do a special podcast to talk about Ascension. So keep your eyes on the Facebook page and we'll be posting details for that as soon as we have them. It should be about um, 9 o'clock Australian time or I think it's 6, 7 o'clock American USA time. Um, we're still working out the details on that one. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, 16 hour time difference. 15 yeah. daylight savings. Fif- it's 15 at the moment. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, we're going to jump to our first ad break. It goes for about a minute. So we normally do this just so we can grab something to drink really quick. We'll be back in a second. We'll catch you on the other side. Before, before there was dust. Before the earth became a graveyard. Before the company. What's the best gift for the fangirl or fanboy in your life? Why passes to Hawaii Con, of course. The 2015 four-day pass is on sale now through December 31st and makes an amazing present that will give out-of-this-world memories. You can get an extra special present via the Kickstarter campaign where you can help pick the stars who will appear at the next event. You can choose stars from Doctor Who, Torchwood, Stargate, Firefly, and Farscape. To purchase tickets or more information on the event, visit HawaiiCon.com. Welcome back to the podcast. Sorry, I might have missed the end of that ad break by a little bit. Got slightly distracted. Anyway, joining me still is Scarecrow and friend whose name I've forgotten because I'm a real professional. Andy. 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 Bob. Joining us is get is Bob. (laughs) (laughs) I are Bob. (laughs) Brave is autistic madman. So yeah, anyway, um, a couple of rumours came squiggling across our page um, recently. One was that that Emperor Palpatine might be in Star Wars Episode Seven. So that's interesting. That wouldn't surprise me, even though they've thrown most of the expanded universe book stuff away. They have kept some of it. I've seen a few bits and pieces of it showing up in the trailer and information that's leaking through. And Palpatine having survived slash cloned himself, fairly likely. He does really that subscribe to the count. He does really subscribe to the evil overlord bastard moments. Yeah. Oh yeah. Random so note. He somehow used a. Oh, I was just going to say, random note, yep. his name has actually been revealed. We have Palpatine's first name. Have you guys heard this? Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. No, I haven't. I, I've heard a previous name he had, as yeah. a first name, through the novel series. Yeah, the, the novel Tarkin apparently has Palpatine's first name in it, and it's Sheev. S-H-E-E-V, or however that bloody hell you meant to say that. 
I have no that idea. Does sound like the original Palpatine. No. She's Palpatine. Like, Who is eating? Evil. Who is eating their mic right now? Not. No. Not probably me, but I'm not touching the mic. It's me. Um, trying to fix the uh, electrical tape wrapped around my headset cord to stop it from uh, peeling off and trying to electrocute me. Ah, that sounds like fun. Strange, because my <laughs> mic is my <laughs> mic is well away from my mouth. Anyway, she's Palpatine. No. Somehow survived a Death Star detonating after he was thrown to its core. I would definitely like to see how they explain that. Easy! As you... What? No, no. As he fell <laughs> down the hole, he accidentally landed in the TARDIS, who was parked there with the doors open, waiting to catch River Song. And she stole a thingy. Ha. Uh, my plan wins. Like That's funny. exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> and... And the, do and the doctor sort of went, oh shit, we've oh, got an evil guy in here. Let's throw him onto under a bus somewhere. And that's how he survived. Also, news on Mark Hamill in the movie. Apparently he's got a contractually obliged beard. If you want to well, see what this beard it. looks like, it looks hilarious. Yeah. And he only yeah, looks 112 years old. Like, he... Looks older than Obi Wan in the original movies. He, I think. Well, he's now taking on the role of what Obi Wan used to be. Yeah. The instructor. Well, so, he, he sort of looks like he's aged knows? catastrophically. Just in the past twelve months, he's gone from looking normal to a hundred and ninety-twelve. Anyway, oh, maybe he's actually taken on the role of Yoda. <laughs> yeah. He just impressed. I am. And last, it's Skywalker. My name is. <laughs> and last but not least, and I think this is probably the biggest piece of Star Wars related news since Episode Seven was announced. Disney is currently working on, with the use of the original prints, a Blu-ray release of the original Star Wars movie in their original cut with their original sound effects, no Lucas tampering at all. So it'll be, this is effectively a collector's edition for the purist. It's going to be A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi on Blu-ray. So it's going to be crystal clear-ish, I guess, um, with everything original. So that means Han shoots first. Do I have a hallelujah? Apparently not. Apparently all, I have to say is that all I have to say to that is one thing. Rule 37. Rule 37. <laughs> Someone give that guy a bigger blaster. <laughs> That's me face palming right about now. Yeah. Doing my best not to. Um, so Damn it, Scarecrow. Based on what we've been told about Episode 7, which is somewhere around a bucket load of nothing, um... And the fleeting glimpses we've had here and there. What are you guys expecting? Is it the sort of thing you're going to go and check out day one, front of the line, in your helmet, because fuck it, why not? Or is it the sort of thing you're going to wait and sort of wait and see how it goes? And uh, First things first, I never make it to the first of the line wearing, my, wearing a helmet, fuck it sort of thing. Yeah, I may I've that up seen the, uh, your, right. I've seen your helmets. I've, I I know what they look like, and it does not surprise me for a second that you don't make it to the front of the line. The only line I can see you make it into wearing one of your helmets that I've seen you wear is one of those witness stand-up lines that you see in the cop show. To be I... honest, I wouldn't be wearing the helmet. <laughs> film like that, there's just too many people. I'm gonna wait till it dies down. I want to be <laughs> yeah. able to listen to the music. And the film without the screen. Well, I'll only watch it four I times. Rabid, so I leave the rabid helmet wearing to the wonderful members of the Five Hundred First. <laughs> yeah. See, if if I was Disney, I would contact the, all the Five Hundred First around the world we'll all... and yeah, show. We'll all hear Mark Hamill say, "No, him 
impossible that is. Mm, yeah. Taken on the role of Yoda. Well aware of that. Um, contact all the five of us around the world and say, okay, Star Wars Hardcore Nuts, you get first sneak peek. Here is... Go to these, these cinemas at this time and you get to watch the first ten minutes before anyone else. Ah, uh, but here's the funny thing. And Disney then, won't do that because they don't like the five of first. Yeah. Really? I thought they were liked at Disney World. No, no, no. The uh, Stormtroopers at Disney World are uh, people... They are uh, random Disney employees who they pay to wear costumes. Like, oh, that's mouse right. ones. Because everyone at Disney are paid actors, not actual staff members. Yeah. The five first just wear it for shits and giggles and... Their stuff actually looks better than the stuff the Disney guys got. <laughs> As it wasn't That's until occasion. it wasn't until Disney started putting the kibosh on the five hundred first guys that we started getting little YouTube clips like the twerking stormtroopers. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Complete with Darth Vader going. Your twerking creates a disturbance in the Force. Seriously, Disney, when are you gonna learn? Don't fuck with the nerds. You don't end badly for you every single time. It just makes us get more creative. Not even that, it's... Creative like a madman. They... Nerds tend to be smarter than you. Generally speaking. Not always. Most of the time. The geeks are smarter than the nerds, though. Yeah, for the most part. As far as I'm concerned, geek, nerd, same difference. So, mm, yeah. yeah. Damn it, I was waiting for you to go, No! Rah! I was thinking, three, two, one, nerd rage. Nothing. <laughs> Most well, anticlimactic in... setup argument ever. <laughs> well, nerds and geeks versus Disney, we kind of don't care which title. Yeah, fair enough. It's one of those enemy of my enemy type deals. Indeed. Exactly. Yeah. The, the only thing worse, that will, the only other thing that will get uh, nerds and geeks united would be Star Trek reboot. Pe- no, the <laughs> campaign to ki- the campaign to kill Frozen. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. just just let it go, mate. I need a shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to let it go as soon as Disney stops trying to milk money out of it. Ah, you just our poor listeners. You now have permission to to kill yourself with the sound, but please don't. We we want you at least to listen to the end of the show, and then we'll give you catastrophic reasons to do that. <laughs> but then don't, just don't. Whatever you do, don't. Okay. We're keeping you around. Yeah, we, we we need our zero listeners. Okay, guys. We, if if our zero listeners start killing themselves, we'll have less than zero listeners, and that'll break the internet. You mean like it already no, hasn't been broken? By zero. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We'll divide. We'll. We'll divide our zero listeners by infinite. No, we'll have our bo- our overall boss knocking on our doors, going, "Stop killing my minions!" Exactly. Damn evil overlords. Yeah. Anyway, hey, move. I don't know about your boss, but I report to Satan. Remember? Yeah. See, unfortunately for me, Thor is currently off fighting the replicators, and he hasn't been able to talk to me recently. He might come back eventually. Probably in another body. And I won't tell the difference. You'll get angry at me again. I have daddy issues. I'll sell tickets to the. I'll sell tickets to the show, and <laughs> we'll take. And I run a betting pool on just where you land this time. <laughs> Fun. Uh, okay, so I'll hide behind a Mary Sue, and um, use some pot armor, <laughs> and stay the hell away from that area. It's okay. I'll bring my plus five ace axe. God damn it! I screwed it up. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh, moving on from Star Wars, we have some Suicide Squad news. Um, normally, Stuart's the one that does this, but he's got family things to do, so he can't do it, so I'm forced to do the news. Um, Viola Davis it has been cast as Amanda Waller in the Suicide Squad. Originally, they were going to go with... Not even joking. Thank fuck they didn't. Oprah Winfrey. Oh, what? Uh, I, I'm restricting my language here, but... What? 
Yeah. I, I was that close to just, you know, probably putting a language tag on this particular... Oh no, don't worry, this, this video's got a language, this audio's got a language tag, trust me. Oh, it's, it's me that's talking, I... It's, it's effectively my entire vocabulary starts with F and ends with K. I can make entire sentences oh, from it. Oh, okay. So C and T doesn't matter, or S and T doesn't matter, or uh, D and T doesn't matter? C, C does. Just try and limit it okay. to as, as, as few as possible. I try as few as possible, and I focus primarily on fuck. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. My, my question is this. Again. Yeah. My question is this. What... It's DC. Those two bloody blazers. Were they thinking that Oprah Winfrey could pull off the necessary level of badass? It's DC. Okay, so the character, the, the character um, Amanda Waller is effectively the not quite Fury level, but similar sort of thing. Um, where was it? Yeah, probably more of a Coulson. She effectively is the one in, in charge of the team. Um, Amanda Waller is a former congressional aide and government agent often plays in charge of the Suicide Squad, a semi-secret government-run group of former supervillains working in return for am amnesty. So, the one who they cast was... What's her face? Viola Davis. You'll, most people will know her from... Um, uh, How to get away with murder. Yeah, that's the one. My brain just had a total brain fart again. Yeah, she's currently on How to Get Away with Murder. So if you watch that, you'll you'll know her. She's African American and looks well. The picture that they've got here, pretty cool. Uh, but seriously, Oprah Winfrey, DC, are you seriously trying to break the comic book superhero movies? What the yeah. shit? <laughs> It's like it, if, it actually Oprah if it was Oprah Winfrey, there'd be more like Mama Walla here, not to be badass, but to everyone's careful, don't worry. Yeah. Well, admittedly. Everyone gets a that, and you get a that, and you get a this, and well, everyone gets something. So the biggest, the only plus I can see with Oprah Winfrey is A, she can't act for shit. B, she is very well known in the States. Outside of the States, yeah. not so much, but inside the States, she is ridiculously popular. So that name yes. alone will draw people in. Um, However, the acting side of it, she just doesn't have the stare needed to look like the yeah. badass leader. She just, yeah, she, she's very much lacking in that department. Um, but other than that, yeah, other, other than that, I've got, that I've, got, I've, got, I've got enough gripes with DC. Like, it's almost every time a piece of news from DC comes across my screen i just sort of stare at it my jaw hits the ground and i'm just like what the hell i i stand by what i've said before and i'll say it again and i'll say it 50 times i'll say it a thousand times marvel won't be the ones to burst a superhero bubble everything marvel touches at the moment turns to gold unless something majorly catastrophic happens i don't think the marvel bubble's going to burst the superhero movies when the when the superhero Even movies that. burst... No, no, we'll see, Deadpool, that's, that's Fox, that's not Marvel. Oh, okay. Um, because I'm talking specifically the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm not talking oh, okay. Spider-Man, I'm not talking Fantastic Four, I'm not talking X-Men. They're all owned by different groups. You're talking the actual Marvel. I'm talking Marvel, yeah. Marvel. Marvel, Marvel isn't going to be the one to break the bubble. The one that's going to break the bubble is going to be DC. Because you look at what DC is doing compared to Marvel, and they've got a fractured multiverse, which is just getting more and more scattered. And for the casual viewer, it's going to be really hard to follow um, two different Suicide Squads happening at the same time. Because you've got one on Arrow, sort of, and one on um, the Suicide Squad movie. Right now, this... The Marvel unit, oh, sorry, the DC universe is so scattered all over the place that I think if anyone can burst that DC will, and they'll do it by spreading themselves out and having twenty different characters of the same name, and it's going to be the same character but in a different story, and it's just going to turn into an absolute cluster. Whereas Marvel, on the other hand, with the exception of um, 
Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch hasn't really got any doubled up characters across their movies that are played by different people um, that are different characters. There's a couple that are the same character but different actors, but semantics. Um, so yeah. Indeed. On, on the note of Avengers, uh, a, a new piece of news has come sliding across the desk in um, thanks to Slash Film. Uh, Slash Film interviewed, direct, uh, interviewed Josh Whedon again recently about Age of Ultron. And he, Joss Whedon described it this way. The cast is bigger. The scope is bigger. We have more to work with. Not, we're, not that we're trying to spend more. In fact, we're trying to avoid bloat wherever possible. But with this, we're on a broader canvas. We're in more countries. We have a bigger world to work with and a bigger world for them just to be in. Once they exist as a team, we have to deal with what everyone thinks about that and what that means to the world. So it's not as simple as it was. Uh, later on, they, they got talking about the origins of him, Joss Whedon, coming in to work on the movie. And he said, before I took the first job, I said, well, I don't know if I'm right for this, or if I want it, or if you want me. But in the second one, the villain has to be Ultron, and he has to create the vision. And then that has to be um, Beth, uh, Bettany. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Paul Bettany is the guy that voices Jarvis in all of the Iron Man movies. And in Marvel canon, when um, Ultron is created, he creates the Vision and puts Jarvis's AI program into the Vision, bringing him to life. And I think that's going to be really cool to see Paul jump into that role. Um, role of a villain. Role of win. So, well, the Vision's sort of a good guy and a bad guy. So, it's going to be interesting to see how they go about that. Be nice to actually give Jarvis a major role. Yeah. More well, than just... Jarvis... Witty comments at the uh, random skank of the night that Tony picks up. Yeah. Well, not only that, he's effectively Jarvis do the thing guy. Yeah. And for those who haven't watched um, The Legend of Korra, won't get the do the thing reference. Those who have are uh, probably staring confused at whatever they're listening to this on. And I don't blame them. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't even a nice deal for me. And i got to admit, I haven't seen Legend of Korra, and I don't want to see Legend of Korra. Legend of Korra is actually really good, but not sci-fi, so not the point. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that actually... We're actually ahead of schedule a bit. I noticed. Yeah. Wait, what? I know. Yeah, I haven't seen it take... We haven't even taken an ad break. So. Right, I know what's gone wrong. We're lacking Stuart and his off-topicness. Yeah, the the random jumping onto whatever random topic he feels like talking about. Still oh yes, yeah. before we go to before we go to our ad break. Yep. Um, I've seen the plot for this week for Librarians. Okay. So spoilers, warning, warning spoiler plot, free. May have spoilers. Spoiler free version. Spoiler free version. Spoiler free version. Uh, this Just... is pretty much the same sort of thing you'd get in your local TV guide. Okay, well, we'll go with that. That's fine. The librarians have to rescue Santa when the Serpent Brotherhood want, Brotherhood want to kill him. The crew have to help Santa complete the true secret purpose of Christmas. Okay, so what you're saying is in episode, episode four, 4... we have a Christmas episode. I was about to say, what you're saying Naturally. is... Episode 4 is them jumping a shark. Yay! Well, obligatory Christmas session. <laughs> Let's say, okay, it's let's... not even a Christmas special. It's just an episode based around Christmas. Yes, it's we're probably going to get we're probably going to get a repeats of this episode for the next three seasons at Christmas time. Yeah. yeah. Uh. This is one of the things I liked about Stargate. They never did a Christmas episode. Are you sure? Did once. Are you absolutely sure they didn't? I'm pretty sure they didn't. I seem to remember one. They, oh, did a they did a single Christmas episode, and it was a true Christmas episode. No Santa, nothing like that. 
was just it was them. Everyone was at Christmas. It was a Christmas party at Jack's place. I don't remember Vinny, that one. Of course, Tilt gets the interesting thing of being the socially awkward. Oh, wow! What I is this? Don't get this culture. What is this Christmas? I don't remember oh, that, that at all. So it wasn't Actually, Tilk, It wasn't Tilk who had that. It was Braytac who had that. Oh yeah, because Tilk read up on a whole lot of stuff, didn't he? Yeah. He he would already know because he would have studied ahead. Because he's the big guy that is actually a lot smarter than you originally realized. Hey, Jack's smarter than you originally realized. Yes, but he likes to act dumb. I know. It's a, gr it's a great way to get people to underestimate him. The next thing you know, he's fucking stuck up. What a C4 up your ass, and he's holding the dead and you're going, Ha! Ah, didn't see that coming. Click. I don't. It's true. I have no idea what episode you guys are talking about. It was a, uh, all of. 30 seconds at the end of one episode. I think it would have been something like season 6 or season 7. Ah, okay, that's probably why. Yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah, it's Braytac, now I remember. Who hadn't actually studied up on Earth cultures and customs. Yeah. Alright. Uh, we better do this ad break before we really get started on the Star Trek stuff. On the Stargate stuff. Yeah, we could. Indeed. We should. Uh, anyway, we're jumping away to another really quick ad um, break, about a minute. Catch you on the other side. Before, before there was dust, before the earth became poison, before the companies straight dragon smuggled to this, will they prevail? What's the best gift for the fangirl or fanboy in your life? Why, passes to HawaiiCon, of course. The 2015 four-day pass is on sale now through December 31st and makes an amazing present that will give out-of-this-world memories. You can get an extra special present via the Kickstarter campaign where you can help pick the stars who will appear at the next event. You can choose stars from Doctor Who, Torchwood, Stargate, Firefly, and Farscape. To purchase tickets or more information on the event, visit HawaiiCon.com. Hello, and welcome back to the podcast. I am still here with Scarecrow and Andy. Yo! I remember! Indeed, hello! Uh, so, anyway, we're back, and we're back to talk about Dean Devlin. And specifically, Stargate and Independence Day movie. First up, why are you doing a sequel to Independence Day? All the good sci-fi movies that I enjoyed growing up, that would be the one that doesn't need a sequel at all. It ended. I with don't know. I wouldn't like mind a sequel because now mankind has all this wonderful alien tech just lying around. Assuming yeah. we can work out what to do with it. Oh come on! Oh, We've already yeah. worked out how to drive one. Now how to be to reverse engineer the rest. Yeah, fair point. I can just imagine it. They've got all the shield tech and everything, and the aliens realize, well, we just accidentally accelerated in another... Um, oh, the aliens, on, those right? aliens are already dead. But what's not to say that another group race isn't going to try and step in to take back what we stole? Or hmm. who says that, that entire race was... An island. That, that could have been like one fleet. Yeah, exactly. One exploratory fleet. There yeah. could be others. Yeah, I was still... Be like there's there's a few movies out there that deserve sequels that never got them, just because I can't think of any doesn't make that any less true. And there's um, a f here's one, Spaceballs. Yeah. What? Oh, Spaceballs. Yes. Oh, that, that's a sequel. Actually, be Spaceballs Two: The Search for More Money. Yeah. <laughs> Spaceballs I... Two: The Search for More Fail. No, Spaceballs Two: The Escape from the Planet of the Apes. No, no, no. See, I could I, I could actually see it called. Spaceballs, the search for more money. I could see them calling it that just for the low value alone. <laughs> because it was already mentioned in the movie that it would be called the search for more money. <laughs> and uh. Mel Brooks would probably do that. Now Mel Brooks, do it please. For yeah. the fans and the lols. The only problem with Mel Brooks is he went a little bit crazy. Putting it, putting it nicely. Gula Kaka is probably a fairly apt description. 
<laughs> you have to be a little crazy to be, you know, creative, don't you? Yeah, there's there's crazy there's creative. <laughs> then there's oh look at all the unicorns. Uh, and true. no, not referencing Gundam there. Wait, didn't Mel Brooks have a have something to do with My Little Pony? Uh, he had something to do with My Little Pony. Sure. Not entirely sure, but that's definitely way off the topic. Yeah. Suddenly, the Brodies appear. Oh, no! Right. No! I'm reacting bad, 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 bad Brodies, go away. Oh, did you know there was a Spaceballs the Animated TV Series? What? Yep, I have it on my computer, and oh my god... Do not touch it. If you do have it, do yourself a favor. Destroy the discs or VHSs, delete all copies of it, and then proceed to drink yourself into oblivion. I recommend absinthe. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, you can, it's, it's actually funny. It's actually funny. You could follow his descent into madness on his IMDb page. You've got Spaceballs. Then you've got Look Who's Talking. Robin Hood Men in Tights. Silence of the Hams. Screw Loose. The Kids from Room 402. <laughs> Sex, Lies, and Video Violence. The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius as a voice character. Robots as a voice. Um, let's see. Spaceballs the Animated Series when he starts going totally off the end. And then we have... Um, I thought there was something else back here somewhere. No, I was wrong. Um, then you've got Special Agent Also. Something like that. Uh, Door of the Explorer and Hotel Transylvania 2. So you can oh almost my. see the Descent into Madness just reading through his thing. So yeah, anyway, let's, we, we should probably get back on topic. Back onto the topic of the... Of Dean Devlin. So, anyway. The main topic that I wanted to cover is that he has announced that the rebooted Stargate will be... Um, he will be working on that after Independence Day Forever Part 1. Which is scheduled for release in um, 2016. So, the 24th of June 2016. So... That means the rebooted Stargate potentially could be as early as 2017. Now, I had a three-hour comment debate with a guy on Facebook. This is specifically for you. When a story starts from the beginning, it is called a reboot. Regardless of if it goes into the TV show or not. If it starts again, re meaning again, start meaning boot, because that's what you do when you start a computer, you boot it. That means, therefore, restart is reboot. It is simple fucking English. Sorry for blowing out people's ears. Oh, very... they've all wanted to do that at some point or another. It was indeed three hours of attempting to explain to him basic English and him sitting there going, no, nah, it's not a reboot. <laughs> Why is it a reboot? Because it's not a reboot. Why is it a reboot? Because they're not doing the TV show. What about when Star Trek restarted? The, when when are they making the TV show for that? <laughs> oh, no, that's right. I said, I said what about the, the, the Star Trek reboots? They're a reboot, aren't they? He's like, yes. Yeah. So I said, oh, when's the TV show for that start? Oh, it's not a reboot. But you just said it was a reboot. No, I didn't. Comment had been deleted. I, po I pasted a screen grab of the comment said really you're deleting comments now i'm nice to see how intellectually honest you are three hours later he finally said it's a it okay so it's a reboot but i'm not going to call it a reboot because it's not a reboot and i went but the the the, the sentences and the words they're just uh, uh, i think his goal was to make my brain melt out my nose which is fairly successful <laughs> well, i don't get the feeling that this guy is probably a fan of Jonas Quinn. Uh, well, this guy was... Put it this way. According to him, and this is from some stupendously obscure reference, not even joking, 
is this is from a reference in a role Stargate role playing game book that I can't remember the name of. In that book, they claimed that Ra was originally an Asgard that had been taken host by gold, and that the alien that we see in the original Stargate movie is actually the Asgard body dying from a failed blending. And then Ra moved from the Asgard body to the humanoid body. And I said, what about at the credits when the bomb goes off and you see the, the human body dissolve and it shows the alien body? Oh no, that's just the, the memory remnants from when he was in, merged with the Asgard. Oh, but, oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I like how they do that explanation of, hey, let's put some random plot bullshit in. Yeah. Yay. It's we'll cool. In the plot holes. <laughs> Retconning for the win. Let's see if I can bring up what that was. Um, Brown Stargate Wiki. Where are we? Ah, his name was Famra. F A M R I R. Was an Asgard who was host of the Gould Supreme System Lord Ra before his discovery of the Tower on Earth. This is on the Stargate wiki. So, That's and... Oh, so much stock in Wikipedia. No, no, not Wikipedia. This is just the Stargate wiki. And it's from the RPG game System Lord Plot Hooks. Which was a book release. <laughs> oh, I know. It even... It's from it, the... It even gives itself a name to yeah. say, yeah, this is where we're filling in all the plot holes. Have fun yeah. with that. And it's, just, it's from the Stargate SG-1 role-playing game series of books. I'm trying to bring up when it was, it, when it was released. Um, let's see. There's the Stargate SG-1 role-playing game. Then there's the first expansion. Um, Fantastic Frontiers Stargate Season 1. Living Gods Stargate System Lords. The online supplement was the Stargate System Lord uh, plot hooks. There's Friends or Foes Stargate Season 2. First Steps, um, the Stargate Unexplored Worlds role-playing role source book, and Fallout Stargate Season 3. So, apparently... Oh, that was never... That's unpublished. That was never published. Okay, so... The last one sounds like the new Bethesda game. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Instead of Fallout New Vegas, Fallout Stargate Season 3. Uh, they're, they're Bethesda, aren't they? Did I just totally cock no, up a reference? I think you've cocked up a reference. Woo! Cocked up a reference. Still makes more sense. It still makes more sense than this bloody story. So, anyway. Um, no, wait, no. I think they did. I can't remember if they were... New Vegas, I think, was done by the guys who originally did the Fallout series, whilst Fallout 3, I think, was Bethesda, because they used the same engine as they used in Oblivion. Uh, Funnily, it, Bethesda is the guys who made the first one. Oh, really? Uh, okay, the developer is Obsidian Entertainment. Yes. And uh, the publishers are Bandai Namco Games and Woo. Bethesda Studios. Okay. I was right! Yes. I got the thing right. <laughs> okay. I can't see this going well, combining Bandai Namco, who actually have a history of late of doing good games yeah. and Bethesda who can't seem to pull a good one out of their ass even after they get run over by a train yeah. uh, anyway, anyway back to Ra's Asgard host Famra or whatever according to the RPG book thing which seriously five people have read if any more than five people have read that book I will seriously be surprised and if any more than two of those people actually remember what's in that book even more surprised um, if they actually remember and are willing to respond to this, I have a nice hat for you to eat. Yeah, if if if, if if you do, if you have read this book and you, for some reason, want to defend the contents of this book and how hilarious it sounds, please contact David on Save Sci-Fi on Facebook. Let me know why, and you're more than welcome on the podcast to join us, and we'll talk about it because I'm curious as to just seriously what the hell. What the and, fuck were you smoking when you bought it? Yeah, no, I won't go that far. I'm, or I mean, if they didn't pirate it. Yeah. Anyway, so it's um, back back to the details from the book on the wiki. 
It is unknown um, what, if anything, Ra intended for the fate of Femre, but he was soon spirited away by a Tokra operative within Ra's ranks. The Tokra managed to get Femre back to his people and the Asgard welcomed him back into their fold. Using their advanced technologies to heal his body, what they did not manage to heal was his mind. The memories he had gained since blending with Ra's symbiote drove him mad, and so he started upon a campaign to wipe out every last guild in existence. Due to his madness, he cared little for any innocent who got in his way and simply led as many reckless assaults on the system lords as he could. So, yeah. That is everything that there is there to do with Femrera. Wow, that sounds like a words, really bad ex-girlfriend. Yeah. It, I was about to say, that sounds like my ex-wife. <laughs> oh. Me, after the ex-wife incident. God, oh. this is ouch right there. Yes. Wait, you were married? Trigger warning. No. I wasn't. I was just saying trigger warning to anyone out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait, something really funny happened the other day. Um, this is totally off topic. We've got about eight minutes left, so we've, we've run out of stuff to talk about, so I'm just going to talk about whatever. Where the hell is that noise coming from? Which noise? Okay, so it's just me on my end. Don't worry. I'm What's getting, the noise? I'm getting a really weird buzz. Oh, okay, that's probably my USB. Okay, well, I'll, I'll let you... I'll just leave that alone. Um, anyway, so we had the Matrix movies come up against the Star Trek movies in the Ultimate Movie Tournament. Oh, here and we go. It was Star Trek... Um, what's it called? Insurrection, First Contact, Generations, and Genesis. So 7, 8, 9, and 10. Um, so basically I, a whole lot of movie bullshittery versus a whole lot of movie bullshittery. Yeah. So I, don't, I put my money on the Star Trek stuff because... Yeah. They were actually enjoyable. They didn't oh. require a complete brain. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I didn't mind the Thanks first much. Matrix. I did. The second Matrix was average. The third Matrix was pretty crap overall until the Siege of the City, and that was pretty epic. My opinion. Anyway, um, I expected effectively Star Trek to win that. And right up until about an hour before it ended, the Matrix was winning. By like two votes, and then out of nowhere came the Star Trek fans, and it just got smashed at the end. <laughs> but it, because there's more Star Trek fans, there ever will be Matrix fans. Because uh, when you think about it, Star Trek still came first, and just like Han Solo, it will have shot first. Yeah. Well, a another weird one in the in the tournament that happened. Another weird one that happened in the tournament this week was Contact versus Enemy Mine. Now, oh, now we're getting classic here. Um, I expected Contact to survive a lot. So we'll put it this way: Contact lost, Enemy Mine won. I expected Contact as one of the classic hard sci-fi's. Like it sits right on the hard end of the sci-fi spectrum. I expected it to absolutely annihilate Enemy Mine. Now, admittedly, I haven't actually seen Enemy Mine. I have. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what it's about, but I expected it. I expected honestly expected it to be knocked out last round. I'm gonna, um, de I'm definitely gonna have to watch it now that it's beaten Contact. But the majority of people. Do you want who... me to give you a small information thing on what Enemy Mine was actually about? Ah, uh, not not spoilers, just the general synopsis of it. Okay, sure, go for it. So, he's a space fighter pilot, and it's the generic there against the aliens and such. Their station comes under attack. He's sent out to help combat it. Has some pretty cool fight scenes in it, in terms of space combat, considering how old it is. However, he crashes on the alien planet nearby that really has no real life on there. And no food, no nothing, no supplies until he finds the alien who has crashed, who has the food, and the supplies, and the survival stuff. How he and his enemy have to survive on a planet that has no life, and they don't speak a lick of each other's language. That actually sounds like an interesting movie to watch. I'll have to go down and grab a copy. 
Um, well, see, I'd never heard of it, so I just assumed it was going to lose, because Contact, to me, is one of the great classics. If you had to list sort of top five classic sci-fi movies, Contact's top three um, on almost every list. But anyway. Indeed. Um, so, Contact... Uh, sorry, Enemy Mind beat Contact. And something interesting happened. 2001 A Space Odyssey came up against what I would call the closest comparison to it in the past 10 years, Interstellar. Oh, God. So, 2001 beat Interstellar. And it was... I expected it to be really, really close. One, two votes, that's about it. Um, But it was... Interstellar was absolutely annihilated by 2001. It wasn't even a contest at the end of it. It was... You, we, we scooped Interstellar out in a shovel. That's how bad it was at the end. <laughs> Interstellar is filled with a lot of it. Yeah. Interstellar uh, requires you to go in with an open mind, no preconceptions, and probably helps having just going into it, just having watched the last three or four episodes of Evangelion original. Yeah. Yeah. And having no real understanding of science physics and science fiction. Yeah. That well, would help. It was actually relatively scientifically scientifically accurate and had one of the most scientifically accurate uh, black holes. Admittedly, the guts of the black hole is pure BS, but let's not go there. Okay, anyway, yeah. let, let, let's let's rapid-fire the rest of these movie tournaments. We've got three minutes left. Um, so, X-Men versus Event Horizon. So, it's all the X-Men movies versus Event Horizon. Oh, here we go. I say Event Horizon. Event Horizon? Event Horizon by the, sh- the sheer thing of its horror system. The... I reckon X-Men's going to have it just because there's more fans of those movies. True, Ma- true. But Ma- once they watch Event Horizon, they'll be like, oh. Metropolis versus uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1956. Okay, now we're getting into the Norton Blood classic end here. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's a lot, so... Um, yeah, I would, we should have probably spent a whole segment doing this. We might do that next week. We'll designate a whole segment to go through the tournament and see who we think is going to win. There is a big one, and this is actually quite poignant. The one at the end of next week is Independence Day. Guess what Independence Day was randomly paired up against? Stargate? Stargate, the original movie. Here's the funny thing about that. Stargate was created to fund Independence Day. I know, that's the funny part. So, they're up against each other at the end of this round. So, either Independence Day or Stargate will move on. Above that is Galaxy Quest and Saturn 3. You've got Marvel, the Avengers Universe versus the Doctor Who movie. Um, I'm which... putting money on Marvel for that one. I'm yeah. sorry. I love Doctor Who, but that movie... Which movie are we talking? Day of the Doctor or... No, no, no. It's the, the original one. The original movie. I'm sorry, but Marvel is going to keep the living can out of the Doctor Who movie. The only problem I see is there's a lot of Doctor Who fans. Um, now, the next one is a fairly easy one. Blade Runner versus Robocop. Robo. You think, Robo. You think Robo is going to win? I reckon Blade Runner is going to smash it. Ah, but which version Robo are we talking? Uh, the movies. The original movies. Not the new movies. I still say I still say Robo. Those things are just as popular with fans as Blade Runner is. Yeah. Blade Runner is a bit of a classic. Okay. Anyway. So Robocop. <laughs> anyway. And, and of course, it also goes so much information in one movie. But hey, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we're on the last minute of the show, so the outro music should be playing quietly in the background. Um, so, anyway, now is our last chance for the final says. I reckon of all the movies on this list that I'm currently looking at, the one that is going to win is, uh, the Predator movie, just because. No other reason. Not the last one. I mean, sure, it it goes into that original jungle fighting situation like the first Predator movie, but... Yeah, that was a weird one. Doesn't have the same appeal. I'm yeah. going to throw this out there and go completely random. It's, it's probably already been knocked out, but last Starfighter. Um, oh hell! I that, wish that would. That I don't think has been knocked out. Let me have a look, really quick look. Bloody hell! Stupid 
shooter. The last Starfighter is up against Mars Attacks in week three. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, ten seconds Stop left. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll catch you next time, guys. Might be one tomorrow. Might be one um, next week. Bye. Um, next week. Bye. Um, next week. Bye. Um, next week. Bye. Um,